Hi, my name is Hamil Hussein. Thanks for coming to my talk about fast pages. So first I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Hamil. I'm a data scientist. I'm really passionate about building tools for, for data scientists, so machine learning infrastructure, uh, other tools, one of which uh, that I'll talk about today. Um, I'm also really interested in natural language processing and focus, have been focusing on that. Uh, currently, I work at GitHub. Uh, previously, I was working at Airbnb, and before that, at DataRobot. Also, I spend a lot of my free time nowadays contributing to Fast AI. You can read about some of my work uh, if, you, if you want to. Uh, you can go to my website, hamel.dev, and I collect a lot of my blog posts and other uh, things I work on there. So let's jump into it. So first I wanna set the stage of why I created Fast Pages. What problem am I trying to solve? So before Fast Pages, technical blogging are blogs that involved code, um, which are a lot of the blogs I tend to write as a data scientist, involved a really weird process where I would have code in one place, a Jupyter Notebook or VS or an IDE, and then I would have uh, my prose or what I'm writing in another format, so either in Medium or WordPress or whatever it might be, and then I'm you know writing my blog post and then I'm copying and pasting code from the Jupyter Notebook over to the blog post or from an IDE to the blog post, and you know it was it's very time consuming because if your code changes, you have to copy and paste that code over again, and you have to change the text to match, and it's kind of error prone, and so. I thought to myself, this sounds really crazy. Like, why am I doing this? Jupyter is already a platform that supports text and code together. So I was really frustrated that I was spending a lot of time copying and pasting code from one place to the other. And I really wanted a solution that could just let me stay in something like Jupyter, which is made for code and text. And so I went down a rabbit hole of trying to investigate solutions that could allow you to create a blog post automatically from Jupyter. But the tools I found were kind of complicated. So they involved knowledge of a lot of things, or they assumed knowledge of a lot of things. So invariably, the tools that I found required some knowledge, knowledge about static site generators. So something like Jekyll, Hugo, Gatsby. Um, required you to use something like MB Convert, which allows you to turn or convert Jupyter notebooks into other formats like HTML or text. It also required some knowledge about hosting and cloud providers and networking so that you could host your site. And then invariably you would have to tweak these things a little bit. So um, it would involve some knowledge of HTML, JavaScript, and ACSS to get everything working the way you wanted. And I thought, you know, all of these things were really cumbersome. Um, and this is definitely a lot of surface area for somebody who just wants to write a blog. Another thing I want to talk about is, is ads. And so I was a big user of Medium. Previously, I wrote a lot of blogs there. Um, but then, you know, some of these platforms started to introduce paywalls and ads. And so these can actually be a big deterrent uh, to reading your blogs more so than a lot of people think. So this is a tweet by Joel Gruz, who says, when he encounters these paywalls, he doesn't, he just sometimes closes the blog because it's not worth the effort of opening an incognito window or doing other workarounds to view the blog. It's just, you know, it, it, it adds enough friction uh, to where it's not worth it. And I've definitely seen this uh, a lot of times. So with that, that's why we created Fast Pages. So uh, Fast Pages, you can see it on GitHub uh, at this address, Fast AI Fast Pages. So what Fast Pages is is a system where you save Jupyter Notebooks uh, or a Markdown file or a Word document, but we're going to talk about Jupyter Notebooks today into a GitHub repository, and from there, GitHub automatically converts your blog post or your notebook into a blog post, and then automatically hosts it on 
GitHub pages for you. So all you have to do is save your notebook and then it magically becomes a web page. And it's free, the hosting is free, and the project is open source, of course. Um, and that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. So I just wanna talk a little bit about why I made fast pages. I already touched on some of these things. So I really wanted to reduce the barriers to sharing technical information. And I wanted to create a platform that was free, where information is portable and that you own the content, there's no ads, and that's, re and that's really easy to use. Um, and that lets you do all the things that you would normally wanna do in a blog, like embed images, YouTube videos, so on and so forth. Uh, fast pages, there's actually been over 2,000 unique blogging sites created with Fast Pages, and it's growing really fast. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, so I want to go ahead and show you what a Fast Pages blog post looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and open this uh, blog post, which is written in Fast Pages with the Jupyter Notebook. And I'm going to go ahead and open another window that has the corresponding Jupyter Notebook. Now, notice I clicked on the, the GitHub badge to do that. And this, this, this badge is configurable, uh, so you can either show it or hide it. So as you can see, this is the Jupyter Notebook on GitHub, uh, where you, know, you can see the title, and these are some options. So for example, TOC colon true turns on the option to automatically generate table of contents. I'm not gonna go through all the options, I just wanna give you a flavor of what is available, or what, what kind of things you might be able to do with this platform. Um, and get you excited so that you read more. The documentation lists all of the different options uh, and all the different ways you can configure fast pages to, to meet your needs. Um, okay, so let me show you a couple of things. Uh, one thing that's really important about fast pages and Jupyter Notebooks is the ability to hide and show cells in a very customized way. So you can either you can hide the input and the output to a cell or you can just hide just the code and show the output, or you can uh, show the code and hide the output. And so you can do that with these various different flags. So if you see here, I have this hide input uh, flag in the beginning of my cell as a comment, and what that does is only the output is shown. So you see in the corresponding blog post, you don't see the code cell, all you see is the output that I printed out. You also have this way to have collapsible cells. So a lot of times you have a really big code block and you want to, uh, you want to give the option to the reader to kind of collapse it or get it out of the way. Uh, and you can have that be open or closed by default. So this is one that's closed by default, but I can open it. This is one that's open by default, but I can close it. A really cool uh, feature of fast pages is data visualizations. So Jupyter Notebooks uh, are great for data visualizations, as you know. And so any data visualization that you create with Altair remains interactive. Um, and so you can see here that the tool tips uh, in this blog post it, you know, are interactive, remain interactive. You can uh, filter this particular chart with a drop-down menu you can select the radio button, so on and so forth. This particular chart has tool tips as well. You can zoom in as well. Um, and this is another one that has a tool tip. Uh, your pandas data frames render like this automatically. You can embed images, so you can embed local images. You can do remote images. You can even embed GIFs. You can, uh, your images can have captions with this uh, markdown syntax. You can have emojis, you can embed tweet cards, YouTube videos. Um, you can uh, have these call out boxes. You can even have footnotes. And also Fast Pages supports latex and bibtex. One thing that's really great about Fast Pages is a commenting system. You can enable commenting on blogs if you want through uh, an option. Uh, just like the ones I, I talked about at the beginning of the notebook. And so if you look closely, these, uh, these comments look a lot like GitHub issues, and that's because they're stored in GitHub issues. So I'll show you that. 
So I'll open uh, the issue that backs that comment thread, and you'll see that these are this is all stored in the GitHub issues. And so this is great because it gives you access to this data, and it's it's a uh, something that you can that you can tweak, you can control the comments, you can delete a comment if uh, if you would like. One of the last things I want to talk about is getting started with fast pages. So thankfully, everything you need to know is located in the README of the repository. So if you go navigate to FastAI fast pages, um, you can go to the README and there's a fairly lengthy sort of instruction manual on how to customize things and change things if you want to. You don't have to customize your blog posts at all. In fact, you can just get started uh, right out of the box um, if you want to create a blog post. And I actually suggest that. I suggest creating a blog post uh, quickly and then going back and finding things that may interest you. I just want to quickly highlight some of the things in the README that are of, that are of interest. So the, the setup is really easy. It's just two steps. Uh, there is a video tutorial um, in case you want to see something more guided. Another thing I really I want to um, highlight that a lot of people miss, but that is really important, is how to develop locally. So running the blog on your local machine. And there's something called the development guide, and what that does is that helps you run the blog locally, which is really important for iterating and be able to uh, see your changes fast. I just want to conclude by saying uh, I hope you get the chance to, to try Fast Pages, and please reach out to me. This is my Twitter handle. Uh, this is my site where you can follow some of my work.